Yeah, here at Davos, the last 20 days have made the conversation has essentially changed. Uh, the conversation now is about China, is about oil, is about global financial markets falling, but it still also remains about digital, all things digital. And that's the central theme uh, this year at Davos, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Vikram? Well, you know, that's what the theme was supposed to be, right? The fourth industrial revolution. And I was actually quite looking forward to it, Prashant, because all these years at Davos, some of the best sessions are the ones where you are learning about the universe and learning about the human brain and how do you fight aging and internet of things, which is what I yeah. thought this was going to be about. But I suspect they hadn't quite factored in all that's been happening here. As of now, China and oil and all that boring stuff is going to be back and how far the market's going to go. So I guess that's going to be the theme and China in particular and oil is going to pretty much be driving things, I guess. Yes, Vikram, everyone's talking about returns of 2008, which was never really the talking point last year in December. But last will year the mood was reasonably be... upbeat, I thought. Last year. It definitely was. Uh, and now and they're going back India, to whether we'll have a repeat. Full year of, uh, the Modi government, right? It yeah. was especially upbeat for India last year, this time. Yeah. Uh, so. Yes, I think in Davos, though, Prime Minister Modi has an excellent opportunity. I know he decided not to come here, and there were rumors that he might make it. He decided not to. We have Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, who's going to be speaking at your uh, debate, at the NDTV Time debate. Time to get in a quick plug for that. Which will be a big one. Uh, so, rem rem uh, again, reminder to tune in for that. But what he has is a very unique platform this time to sell the India story where China is so struggling. Because if you have the world's you know, fastest growing economy now struggling, can India step up to the challenge? Can it make it big with Make in India, Digital India, Startup start India, but make it in the time frame? That is crucial. Will they be able to do it in the next month? You know, I think, I think Namrata, there is a great uh, position for India to take right now. If you look at the IMF's official forecast, it is saying that India is going to be growing at 7.5%, 7.3%. China is down in, in, at, in the 6% or so 6.8%. So India is the fastest growing big economy. Now you could keep quibbling about data, both Chinese data and Indian data, but that's what the forecasts are looking like. I think the bigger opportunity is that uh, a lot of the concerns that are really haunting people here at Davos, whether it is a collapse in the price of oil or what is going to happen to China, are not necessarily factors that are that as bad for India as they are, let's say, for Brazil. So if India is able to say, look, we will be spending on infrastructure and we can get our act together, there is a story, I think, to be sold I there. think that's the point. I mean, will India spend? Because corporates in the private sector isn't spending. Will India, the government, spend? And I think you can put that question okay, to Mr. Jaitley. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think that's because in an environment where the private sector is in a way not spending or investing. By the way, interesting factoid, in 2015, which is the first full year of the new government, uh, new investment proposals were lower than 2014, in, uh, you know, uh, four months of elections essentially in 2014. And 2015 was supposed to be this, you know, great year. Well, it hasn't been. And I think the government must still take the lead in terms of spending uh, at this point. I think the other thing to really now look at are those big global factors. And I think at Davos, one of the things that we should all set ourselves to try and get as takeaways from Davos are the answers to those two or three big questions. A, what is going to actually happen to China going forward? B, what's going to happen to oil, which we've been talking all along? And also, is there going to be some major impact now on Europe again or Japan or is the US really going to become a safe haven as some people are saying it is or will it not is US and in oil oil yeah I is the US in trouble is US in trouble I mean I think uh, you're to say Utah. I, I think this is you're interesting because you know last month when we finally saw the rate hike which we've been waiting for for at least a year if not more uh, Janet Yellen seemed to suggest that there are going to be three hikes this year in 2016 that's the market expectation it could be two to three now my bet is on the table, no hike. There are people who are talking about possible cuts, but how much can she cut? You know, there's no room, there's no QE4, cushion. QE4. In 2008, we had that cushion. You're talking now about we don't QE4. have that cushion. No, QE3 is done, QE4 maybe. How Another much? Can I, can I ask both of you financial experts, just how much money can this world print before somebody is going to start worrying about what the value of that money is? How much money has been printed? Vikram, how much debt is out there? After 2008, it is a given, and global investors believe this, that the government will save them. Now, if the government doesn't government act up, there will be a banks. huge credibility yeah. uh, come down. And I think that's really the key story. So Even with can, China, with oil, actually, with Fed, can debase, the government has to you come can, and save us. You can do us. monetary debasement up to a point, but at a certain point, someone's going to start worrying. 
Well, you can I, do the yuan devaluation and the world is worrying. And they are trying to keep the time. mystery, but the world is worrying, uh, you know, with yeah. those slow uh, growth is at 25 year lows. Actually, the current turmoil that we've seen over the last fortnight, actually three weeks, four weeks, some believe that the, the, the market is worried that cent central banks have lost control which is China, which is Yuan, right? I mean, if you look at the Forex data which came out of China, it seemed to suggest that their Forex reserve, dollar reserves have gone down, which means they've been actually selling dollars yes. to try to control the Yuan fall as against the common theory that they are pushing the value of the Yuan down. So the fear is, I mean, are central banks losing control of, the, okay. control of this thing? So what are the other answers that we want the experts out here to be telling us by the time we are through with Davos? So are you hoping to see some sort of a some sort of an indication as to where oil is going to end up because I'll tell you why they, 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 and I, again you're at one of those points where you're having some people saying oh, oil is going to go all the way down to 16 and then by the way solar is going to come and fusion is going to come and oil is never going to go back up that's one $10 theory from standard charter ten dollars and under is the standard charter theory and, and the Saudi Arabia theory yeah so they're all <laughs> these theories and Iran is coming back and solar is coming. that's one theory second theory says that oil is going to start bouncing back and therefore India and countries like India should start building a strategic reserve so are you think you're going to get an answer in Davos or no you can get my answer I think oil is going to go up your answer, <laughs> what the answer <laughs> I think we're going to put the question, but no one knows, Vikram. When oil was at 150, people I remember people said 300 dollars. There was there was the largest bank, by the way. Which Even the IMF dollars. report this time around, which says 7.3 percent for India and 3.4 percent for global growth, that factors oil at 42 dollars per barrel. Okay. 42 dollars. So with 10 dollar oil, that report is not going to look the way it does. Okay. Now, is, uh, are any of you interested in knowing what is the question that I want the answer to at Davos? I think our viewers are. <laughs> I mean, the Internet of Things, fourth, fourth Industrial Revolution, can I get everyone back to that theme? That's what this is supposed to be about. Sure. The Internet of Things is coming, digital is coming, the Internet is coming. Is that going to continue to change the world? Well, that's another question we might get the answers to. At least I'm going to try and get it. You guys can have fun with oil in China. <laughs> Well, and also, I think with the Internet of Things, Vikram, another point which India possibly will have to answer right now is how it's going to adopt the Chinese manufacturing model and make it ours without looking at a possible slowdown or a crash in the future. So this is going to be important because Make in India was about India being the manufacturing powerhouse. But now that we look at China's mistakes, yeah. how do we change and that? Can India become an innovation? So at the risk of getting in a quick plug once more time, so I've been that special NDTV web debate, I will be asking these guys as to how to get India's startup economy going. Alright guys, thanks very much and uh, all of you keep watching, programming, all three of us over the next three days as we get you all the top stories and everything out of Davos here.